Meanwhile, my name is Serpul Guran, director of Rutgers Eco Complex. Hello, everyone. Should I keep pressing this advancer? All right. Five, four. It's going on and on. I think they have to switch to your presentation. No, no. I'm trying to find one. I better patiently wait. Maria will load you. Um, plastics we're talking about, right? And so, where is my slot? Yes, yes, that's right. That's All right. Um, I will, uh, you know, offer. Uh, should I? Yeah. Where am I? Right. It's not working. Am I pressing the wrong arrow? Yeah. It's not working. No, it's stopped. Maybe I'm sorry. Maybe you turn it off. Um, what a chance. <laughs> what a luck. Could you advance it for me? One second. Sure. At least now you can see how what is my name is spelled. Circle. <laughs> no, Alright, yay. Yay. Alright, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Um Currently, we are using plastics almost like 90, 93, 94 percent fossil waste. And I'd like to bring also definitely um, plastics pollution, all the experts are, <coughs> they've been talking by now. But also plastics pollution is part of also, also a reason for climate change, all right, and the global warming. I'd like to bring the uh, uh, viewpoints that when we, when we try to uh, eliminate plastics pollution uh, effects, also we should be able to think about how to, uh, you know, uh, reduce uh, climate uh, global warming. I'm not going to read everything since this morning. Uh, many experts mentioned these things. Yep, plastics have been in our lives, uh, and uh, so um, Phil, uh, Dr. Dr. Demokra uh, Demokra too, uh, was mentioning that he tried two days of without plastics. I was, I was wondering, you didn't even hold your phone? And uh, because even, <laughs> you know, phones, and uh, something is happening. Not me. I am waiting, yes. And uh, plastics are everywhere, either fully or partially, uh, every product almost all products, not every product, I shouldn't say, they are um, they're, uh, partly plastics. And, uh, I, I'm sorry, okay, um, partly plastics, I apologize. I thought that to everybody here is me. Uh, yeah, so so um, either fully or partially, uh, many products are made of plastics. Yep, uh, plastics also, uh, you know, they are emitting a lot of greenhouse gases, but also just to make one pound of plastics, you spend 22 gallons of water. So plastics, in addition to carbon footprint, they have water footprint. And, and obviously land degradation of contamination, everybody is mentioning, and it's costing uh, climate change, health, about $75 billion uh, per year. And uh, so, uh, in addition to um, carbon and footprint, they have the health, uh, you know, uh, impact. They have the persistent organic pollutants and short chain, uh, you know, uh, chlorinated paraffins and the, you know, tetrabedes, octabedes. I'm not going to read a lot of chemicals, but also PFAS. Um, the, 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 you know, if PFAS causes microplastics, and microplastics have PFAS. So, so their environmental and health uh, footprint is so, uh, you know, bad. And then we're talking about bio-based plastics. Are they the solutions? And depends, and I will say, uh, because there are bio-based pr uh, plastics, they are, they are non-biodegradable. So, so basically you're creating a plastic formula from uh, biomass, and uh, they are not biodegradable, they are bio-based. But then, bio-based plastics, then they are biodegradable, such as like polyactic uh, acid or PHAs or thermoplastic starch. But, so that is why we have to make sure that not all bio-based plastics are innocent if we are trying to avoid the pollution. 
So this is really important. Those bio-based plastics may be, uh, you know, may be look to us that they are innocent from the greenhouse gas perfect, uh, uh, point of view because they're not using fossil uh, resources, but they're not decomposing. So they're going to create the similar pollution, microplastics pollution. And, uh, and so that is why we really have to make sure that they are not going to drive land use changes, uh, deforestation, they are not going to create a reduction of carbon six, they are not going to uh, increase the greenhouse gas emissions. So that's important, you know, we have to be very, very careful for that. And obviously, where to start eliminating pollution. Yeah, and uh, so when I say pollution also, not the after use of uh, pollution, but uh, until they are produced in production pollution also, I mean. Yeah, and obviously, restraining plastic demand. We have to, uh, we, uh, as much as possible, we have to restrain the plastic demand. And uh, plastic life, uh, life cycle emissions are, you know, they are, uh, as I mentioned, not only the plastics pollution, but also climate change mitigation they, uh, in, uh, you know, um, uh, they address. And uh, what we need is improved and innovative recycling. Current uh, recycling is not helping because currently we say that we are uh, recycling, but actually we are trying to put everything, plastics, in one bin along with other waste, and then we think that we are recycling. And now what happens, they uh, take away, uh, even if you source separate your plastics, they put into one truck, they, it goes into recycling centers, and because we recycle one, one you know, single stream recycling. So what happens? It goes to recycling centers. Yes, um, they s try to separate. In old days, when we used to source separate uh, uh, waste, uh, the residue at the uh, recycling centers was around 10%. What happens? That residue, either it goes to recycling, uh, I mean, landfills or incinerators. But now, with single stream recycling, what I was told that uh, in many cases, residue amount is about 30, 35%. So basically what happens, that part goes into incinerators or landfills. Basically we are sending our recyclables via recycling centers back to landfills or incinerators. So why am I telling you? Current recycling practices, especially single stream, is not. And then obviously who is going to get that plastic, recycled plastics? That's another thing. You mentioned a little bit earlier Yes, um, you know, uh, California was saying this, oh, we used to, we were uh, recycling 60%. So basically they used to send the plastics to uh, Far East and then, you know, not to uh, profile certain countries, please don't misunderstand me, but that was the reality. And then wherever they end up, they are being burnt mostly. And they weren't trying to, you know, cry, uh, create uh, polymers or monomers and try to make new plastics. Mostly they are burnt and they call it renewable energy. So incineration should not be, even the <laughs> waste incineration should not be called renewable energy. Now, yeah, those particulates, yes, um, in New Jersey and in the US, mostly EPA controls, you know, install bag houses and stuff like that, but still particulate emission is important. Why? Like we discuss at the because those particles may have polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, it may, uh, especially the microplastics, microparticles, and uh, so it, go, it goes into your bloodstream. And all these uh, experts have been talking. So, and then what happens? That goes into your certain uh, you know, parts of the body, and then uh, especially polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are uh, defined as carcinogen. So, this is important. So um, improved innovation, uh, innovative recycling is needed. So just to see, just to provide you the uh, greenhouse gas emissions also from uh, from uh, production to disposal. And the, you know, I borrowed this from someone, uh, uh, one literature uh, source. They showed that recycling emissions is green. You know, again, it's waste to energy. Some people call it still a, a green energy, but in my view, they are not. It's brown energy in my view. <laughs> and so, but somehow, as you see, that um, uh, landfilling, 
incineration, a little bit the recycling also is happening uh, in this research. And so they are still emitting uh, emissions, but how to recover that part also that if we can displace at least the resin production emissions with that. So why do we have to dig for more carbons? Because at one point we're talking about we need to mitigate climate, uh, I mean global warming. So how to do that? It's the important part. Yes, there are options. Uh, uh, you know, um, are they fully um, uh, practiced? That's another story. Mechanical recycling. It's basically um, you can produce. Um, oops, sorry. Um, Anyway, the first bullet I'm trying to say that waste plastics are recycled into secondary products. It's basically, so you pass through the mixed plastics and so automated mechanical sorting process and then so basically you create uh, new pellets and so you can produce new products. And especially when you are using with these projects renewable energy, low carbon or zero carbon electricity, or power, and so uh, now you are not uh, adding further, and that you're not digging further carbons, uh, oil or gas, for the new uh, plastics. And some uh, research out there that I borrowed certain things, you see this is possible, recycled polyethylene, recycled polypropylene, recycled, uh, you know, you can see that uh, and composites also, Agricultural seedling trays you can produce, you can produce uh, like uh, uh, water storage materials, car interiors. So it's basically, uh, they can either be the used ones, can be a feed stuff, or you can produce new things. To substitution ratio that, uh, you know, research used 50%. And so these are not single use plastics. So why am I saying this? You cannot possibly, possibly ban everything but maybe we should produce something. Yeah, but uh, you know, in a way. Uh, another thing, and uh, so I'm giving you that, you know, um, uh, uh, extrudes and agricultural things, bottle caps are uh, using. So basically, uh, that these are the options that we should, uh, you know, eliminate leakage into the environment. Or we should not burn that, or bury that. Because at the same time we keep, uh, uh, you know, digging for new, infra, uh, you know, a new frac carbon, uh, either gas form or oil form. So, chemical recycling, dissolution, when you, when you use the chemical in a certain way, innovative way, acceptable way, you can uh, dissolve the polymers uh, into, a, you know, a, a polymer stage and the, the products and then you can produce uh, new, pl new plastics, or uh, you can further uh, uh, make them smaller into uh, monomers. You can produce something, and then you can use catalyst and um, you know, um, waste from some processes. So that's a possibility. Thermochemical recycling, I have to draw your uh, uh, attention to this because we have to be very, very careful when we are talking about gasification. Gasification should not be practiced as, uh, you know, uh, like this guy's incineration. Because uh, sometimes people walk around, they say that they're going to do gasification, but actually, um, you know, uh, they may put more oxygen and they may burn uh, stuff. But if, if it is a real good gasification, real gasification, you produce syngas, pass through the catalyst, you can produce new products, pyrolysis like that. These technologies are not currently highly practiced because the feedstocks are so cheap and abundant. Nobody is trying to use um, <laughs> waste plastics to produce cleaner chemicals, unfortunately. Because as you know, markets and um, you know, feedstocks, technologies, they all are you know, um, policy-based activities. If the policies require that certain percentage waste plastics should go into every uh, product, you know that's that's the uh, recommendations we should make really. And uh, obviously, education and outreach is so so important. How to recycle, and uh, so from single stream uh, to source separation, 
and then who is going to collect and where it's going to end up. And uh, decision making is so important and uh, correct information, every level of society, whoever is recycling, school kids to making policies and we are proud, uh, you know, this, our decision makers in state, they are doing great things, but we need not only in New Jersey, in the region, of in, in the nation, we need good education and outreach and uh, um, definitely banned on certain plastics, definitely is necessary. And then surcharges and uh, um, on other plastics um, or cleanup. Research is important so that you can use it. Taxes and also uh, standards for circular designs. Because current plastics uh, may not, because they're co complaining that why, you know, uh, you kept hearing that, oh, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, recycle this and that and uh, so, because chemical industry doesn't want to spend extra money. If they are required, if they are encouraged, maybe they're not going to say what I'm going to say, if they are required, they should be able to take it. And then innovation is necessary also. Maybe they currently, what they, they don't know how to recycle it, but this nation uh, uh, is sending people to space, or, uh, you know, we should be able to create better, yeah, you know, recycling and um, circular design plastics. And again, science-based decision. Need to plan ahead always, and uh, so, Engage decision makers. I already said this, but we should say this many times. And then improve collection and sorting. That's very, very important. Enabling markets is important. And uh, return long term. We have to do investment on better packaging. And so um, those packages are maybe not plastic anymore. Maybe we should, we should. Uh, you know, adopt different things. I am not saying this, oh, we should use this instead, but I am saying this, we should, you know, uh, you know, uh, think critically and then decide critically. It's very, very important. And uh, R&D is so important on renewable heat stocks for plastics. And also, this is most important, again, we have to decouple plastics from fossil sources. And uh, so if we want to uh, uh, mitigate uh, you know, global warming, and uh, so it's the important. And in every innovation, um, what we need is technology push and also policy pull. So that is why I congratulate uh, state decision makers. Policies are important, and, but also we need technology push too. And uh, so um, education, education, outreach, and what we need, we have to count carbons uh, correctly. No greenwashing and the life cycle analysis is important. And uh, so um, reliable, transparent data and this kind of events for educating people is so important. And thank you.